love them. That until probably two or three weeks ago, I had no right to be here. I don't know, I don't know what the problems are. I don't even know what they are. And so I think the Lord had to give me a little, just a little taste. I don't even know what you all have been going through. I just know that I have a heavenly father who knows. He knows each one of you. So I hope the things that I can can say to you today, you'll just not take from me that, that you'll know the Lord, he cares for you. That I don't know if I love songs, um, and I stand here and sing them because I'd rather do that than about anything else. You know that song, He's Still Working on Me <laughs> to make me what I ought to be? It, took, it didn't take him long to make the world. Seven days. I'm 91, and he's still not through working on me. I'm glad. I'm glad he didn't give up on me. But he's given me so many things. I'd like, I'd like some time to sit down with coffee with you all and tell you where I came from. <laughs> Only God could take a little, boy, little girl born in Kansas and take me all the way through the world, just about, bring me to a little town in Kentucky to meet the man I was supposed to send, spend 67 years with. Only God could do that. I'm so thankful for I He just, he's in charge. So I know the things that he, by the way, I brought Dawn, I call her my little girl because she's the smallest of my four. She's, a, she's precious. She's bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She just, she just is so precious to me. But all these years, and, and, I, and I don't have time to go back and tell you the strange things that God used to even tell me who he was and to reach me. But just a very few years ago, um, I just was doing exactly what I like to do. And I left my husband at home so he could study, which he loved to do. And uh, you want rid of that? Yeah, we're going to turn it off. Good, because I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But, but I, I decided that I needed to go to Chilla Coffee. And I didn't get home very quickly because I had a very serious car accident. I went to sleep coming back. And that's not a good thing to do while you're driving. <laughs> I about destroyed one nice big truck, but it, it caused all 11 of their, uh, whatever you call those things, to go off, and they weren't hurt permanently. And then he scooted me around, so I missed a big tanker. Um, this lady and that lady came to see me in the hospital. But... So nothing that I did changed, except every time I needed to do all these different things, I had to say, honey, will you take me? They wouldn't let me drive. They didn't figure I was safe to drive. And so my life changed that way. That's probably five years ago. Still, I, I don't know what it is. I had a lot of pain when I had four children, but no big deal, look what I got from it. <laughs> but I didn't have any, any, any pain, really. And then um, I knew um, that our 67th anniversary was coming up. And I wanted so much to do something that Harry and I could do together. We both love the Word of God and there are preachers that we listen to on TV um, or over the internet, and I said, I, they're having a conference in Florida. Maybe we could go. So we signed up for it. Our kids didn't think we were capable of doing this. They helped us get there, but they sent her along. <laughs> she, they knew she'd keep us straight. 
It was a wonderful, wonderful conference. We were just, we were just bubbling over with the good things that God gave us from his word. That's what it was. Met new, we didn't know anybody. We just knew who these men were that were giving us the word of God. So we came home and I already had begun this work that I'm in the middle of that my, they thought it was um, leukemia and it's something very similar. So I keep losing blood and so I have to keep getting blood. So the night that we had a really bad storm was right after we got back and they sent me to the hospital to get it and it was a horrible night. We came home about 2.30 in the morning and I got up about 5.15. I had to go to the bathroom and I missed it and I fell. That was the first day in my life that I ever knew I could scream and I screamed. It was very, very painful. Mm -hmm. And I had two days of that. And I ended up using a wheelchair from our church. And then I went to, uh, and that, then I celebrated my 91st birthday that way. <laughs> um, and then I, I graduated to a walker and now I'm, I'm doing fine. I still have to have blood every, about every two weeks and that they tell me it will get worse. And they told me that there are people that have blood twice a week and I said, honey, I can't do that. You know what he told me? He told me I wasn't in charge. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm not, but I just thought that was just too much. So. That's the only way I have to relate to some of you. I don't know the things that you're going through, that you've already gone through, that you have coming up, that you're not right now going through. The people in your family, but I know who does. You see, we forget. We see these pictures of Christ hanging on the cross a bunch of bones to what really happened. He was, he was absolutely, he became a piece of flesh. Didn't do it for him because he was, he had no, no part of sin. He did it for us mm -hmm. and he knew how unthankful, how stupid some of the things we would do, how we ignored him how we put everything before him. But he did all that for us because he had no sin and he chose to do that for us. He went through all of the pain more than we will ever know because he took it for us. And that's the, that's the hope we have. But the thing that the Lord did since then, and this is the thing that I appreciate so much, because I can't get out and do all the things that I want to do, although I'm doing much better. We've sat down together. Oh, that husband of mine, he's fantastic. He not only is the best preacher I ever knew, but he lives it at home. So we sit in the morning with our coffee and we watch, we, we listen to verses from the scriptures, book after book after book. And then we listen to messages that just penetrate. And he did that, but he had to get rid of my thinking I had to do everything and go every place. He just had to make me be still. And that's hard, I guess it's hard for me to do. Reminds me, he's still working on me. And whatever you're going through, I have, I have somebody that I love very much who says, what a terrible God that he would let me go through things like this. No, he went through so much for us. And we'll never, ever, till we go spend time with him, will we understand. 
But we were made not for this life. We were made for eternity. And, and we forget that. 91, and I think, I, will, I, will, I told my kids, I'm not going to be here very long. It's okay. I was made for eternity. So are you. When you came to know Christ as your Savior, you just began to know what God had planned for you from eternity past. You've been on his mind. He knew all about it. He knows the horrible things you go through. And they are so much less than he went through for you. Can't imagine. Just can't imagine it. But, but it gives us an extreme obligation. I have, what right do I have to spend my time for me and do what I want to do instead of continually searching what he wants me to do, what he wants me to be. You see, he's made it possible, as I look to him and depend on him, he's made it possible for me to be victorious no matter what I'm going through. I have gone through nothing compared probably to most of you, what you've gone through. I have, we have four children and they are precious. They are so precious, and they hover over me like I was a piece of gold or something. Mm -hmm. But because we have been able to spend time, if we had not had that week in Florida, just so soaking in the Word of God, didn't know anybody else there. We did meet one couple, but nobody else we knew, except that little girl went with me with us but if I hadn't had that week to be absorbed in the word of God going into what I went to into which was nothing to what some of you have done but it was the worst I'd ever had never knew I I didn't even know I could scream but the Lord he takes care of us he he allows things to happen in our lives not so we'll say, that didn't mean God do that to me. To say, just let me know. He tasted death for me. Not pain. He went through death. And nobody could have done it but him. Because anybody else would have had to suffer for their own pain. Mm -hmm. But he suffered for us. He went through all of it for us. There's some things that I think should be very important to us because we belong to him and what he paid the price for. Just to live any old way, leave what I want to do, let me do what I want to do. I have no right to do that. I belong to him. He paid my debt. And I am not made, this is one of the things, and she's here so she'll hear it, but I have not wanted to go to heaven. Can you believe that? I really haven't wanted to go to heaven. I have a wonderful husband and I have four wonderful children besides the grandchildren and the great grandchildren. But those, those five, I just soon stay right here. I love him so much. God made me for eternity. Before I was ever born, he made me for eternity. So why would I not want to go there? I've got to have my priorities right. But there's some things that I, I owe him because of what he did for me. I owe him a love for his word. I don't care if you are reading, if you are reading and absorbed in anything other than things that will take you to him, put it aside. You don't need it because the word of God is the one thing that you know every bit of it is right. It's all right. Now, he will use, he wants to use everything in your life. I don't know what he has going in your life different than mine. 
but he wants to use it. One of the things we live, you know this, I, I don't even know a lot of what's going on out in the world because I'm not, I'm not in the world. Some of you work in the world. You know the nastiness of the world. You know the bitterness of it, the hatred. So it's easier for me to allow him to keep my mind clean than it is for you. You see the nastiness of the world. You deal with it. You have it spit at you in your face. It's in your ears and it's in your eyes. But God wants you to have a clean heart. He wants the things that are in your heart to be clean. That they speak well of him. Because what you have in your heart is going to come out here. It's going to come out here. You, you can't shield your ears from the world. Because if you work in the world, you're going to, it's going to pound its, its ugliness to you. But you can shield your heart and your mind. you can also shield your mouth. That's hard. He tells us in the word of God that it's hard. Things come out of our mouth that, whoa, did that come out of my mouth? But you, he can have control over that, even though it's hard. And like I say, I have no idea what some of you work and live in. I have no idea. I don't, really, I don't really want to know. But I know that God wants us to have a clean heart. He wants our mouths to be clean. He wants the things that come out of our mouth to be what we would be pleased with, what he would be pleased with. It's not something that is automatic. One of the things that happened uh, before we went into this ministry, um, Harriet was pastoring in a church in Northern Ohio. And we, we chose, he said we needed a program to reach our children and young people. And so we had Word of Life. The Word of Life program was wonderful. I don't know that it still is, but it was wonderful. These young people, and the six of us who were leaders, we were absorbed in learning the word of God, piece by piece. And to show you the evidence of it, all four of our children, and I hate to tell you that, but they're all senior citizens, and I can't believe that, because, but they are. But they can probably quote, quote for you every verse, and we learned hundreds of them. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. And because I learned it in the, in the old, old English, that's what comes out of my mouth because that's, that's where I learned it. But it's the word of God that keeps us from getting into some, some things that the world, the world hates God. They want nothing to do with him. They don't know him. And the only one sometimes may be where they will see him will be through you. There's a, do you love music? I love music and I could stand here and sing to you one, one song after another, but it just comes to my mind, can the world see Jesus in you? Do you live so close to the Lord each day, passing to and fro from life, life's busy way that the world in me or you can a likeness see to the man of Calvary? And I haven't thought of that song for years. <laughs> but you see, what's in our heart is going to come out of our mouths. This is why we need to meditate on the Word of God. We need to, if we don't memorize it, we need to read it so often that we know what it says. And that's so important. It becomes, it becomes autom autom automatically takes us back to Him. <clears throat> 
To me, this is one of the most important things. And one of the reasons that it is, it will remind us of who the Lord is. Why should it be so big and so important to me that the things I think please the Lord? Because the things that I think are going to come out in my mouth. They're going to come out in my life. They're going to situate right here in how I live, how I treat you. And the hardest of all, it's going to be how we think about those around us who are still blind and deaf and are going to hell. They've got to be able to see Jesus in you. I don't care anything about their Bible. Probably may not, may not even have one, but if it did, it doesn't matter. That's an old-fashioned book that doesn't relate to them. But you do. They watch you more than you would ever know. And I know that I may be talking, talking to people that you have people in your family who do not love the Lord, so they probably aren't very crazy about you, especially if you are spouting from him. But it's got to be in your heart. They've got to know that what you're saying to them and the way you're living to them is who you really are. Because the world see, sees falsehood every place. They'll have people that'll take and say, you know, I know Jesus. Woo! If you listen to the things that come out of their mouth, it's not the Jesus I know. So, what I am, what I have has happened to me in my heart because I know him. God, because I spend, I must spend time in his word. I must spend time talking to him about me and talking to him for you and for those that your life is involved with. It's so important. It doesn't come automatically. It comes because we make it our priority. One of the things that have, has been hard for me during these days, I can't stand a messy house. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> and I have to be reminded over and over again that that messy house is not important it's not as important as my time spent with the Lord. I love my husband. It is so much fun just to be able to sit. And while I'm studying and working for this, he's, he's working on messages. He doesn't even have any place to preach it yet. But he's ready. He's ready to go. But those are so important to me. And I can't imagine. Two things I can't imagine. I'll go back to say this, this problem that I realized about three years ago at my home church, they had no ladies class like this. And I became, I became so burdened for these ladies because some of them had lost their husbands, so they were living alone. One lady had lost three husbands, um, not at the same time. Um, and, and, People were going through so much pain. And you know, as ladies, we need to talk to somebody. We, we don't have shut mouths. We have to have somebody that'll listen to us and understand where we're coming from. That's important. So I asked our pastor if he would allow me to start a ladies' class. I say it's for older ladies. I don't know as old as I am, but, uh, and he said, that's fine. And, and that was such a blessing because these ladies, I got fancy cups and, 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 I, and I got a, a, a coffee pot and, and so we had class and, and we sipped our coffee and our tea out of dainty little cups and, and we talked. And these ladies, they began to grow, they, they began to come alive. Uh, then about three years ago, I realized we're going to be traveling. So 
the lady that had we'd been in, her, in their lives a lot with her husband when her husband was dying. Um, I asked her, I said, I believe the Lord wants you to take this class. And she was prepared. She, okay. She was raised with this, these people in the church, so they knew who she was. But they, it's been good for them. So we need to be aware of each other. We need to, we need to be so aware because we've spent time with the Lord who he wants us to meet that day. Sometimes the only people I have that I don't know that I'm able to witness to are somebody I meet in Walmart. And that's okay. That's all right. They need the Lord too. I've got a silly little purse that looks like a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> and that little thing, I have had more opportunities to witness. I'll be in line to pay and I'll, and, and a, a, a young man will sit, be standing behind me and he'll say, oh, I thought you had a hundred dollar bill out there. And I said, no, it's just to remind me that money doesn't mean anything. To meet the Lord, I have to know him. Money, money's no good. Oh. <laughs> now sometimes that's all you get. But you have to be ready to use whatever because you're gonna meet somebody tomorrow. Whether it's in the grocery store, wherever it is, you're gonna meet somebody who doesn't know the Lord, who just needs to have a smile from somebody to, that cares. I want to read you some things that are that we have re received through our through our messages. It's called the supremacy of Christ in suffering. And you think about this as it relates to you. Every grace, every blessing, every good thing you ever dreamed about happening now in eternity comes to you through suffering. It's the only thing that comes through suffering because that's what Christ did for you. Why should I worry about things that I might suffer? He was slaughtered. He wasn't, he didn't die. He was slaughtered. These pictures that they give you, they don't really tell you. They don't really show you what he really went through. He was literally slaughtered for us. Christ bore our sins and purchased our forgiveness and he did it through suffering. It wasn't for him. He had no sin. He did it for us. Some verses that will help you on this in Galatians 3.13. 1 Peter 2.24 Who him his own self bear our, our sins in his own body on the tree. Isaiah 53.5 Christ provided perfect righteousness for us. And because of us, we are in him. And he did it by suffering. Philippians 2, 7 and 8. It says he was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He did that for us. And because of that, I don't know what that does for you. It makes me know that I owe him everything I have. I told you I love music. I have a list of songs. I'm thankful that the Lord has put in my head and in my mind a name of a song and I just sit down and play it and play it and play it. Here's one. I am amazed to know that a God so great could love me so. He's willing and wanting to bless. His grace, his mercy is so wonderful. I can't understand it, I confess. But Lord, help me be what you want me to be. Your will, 
I will obey. My life I will give for you I will live and walk by your side all the way. That's where we need to live. And that's not, that's not where we like to live. I think I have all these things I want to do today. What does he want me to do today? I'll tell you one of the things that this has also done for Harry and I. Our, our prayer list is getting so long. We can't do it all in one evening. Have to do it several, uh, several of them to either get it all in. But there are people today, women just like us, that are standing and having their heads cut off just because they love Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they're willing because he did it for them. So who do I think I am? Do I have to have things just so? I can't do it. Not and look him in the face and say, I love you. I want to be what you want me to be. I want you to so impact my life by what I do and am that others will be impacted, that it will, it will be important to them. See, I'm afraid as the world looks at us, and I know they don't see you when you're at home and reading your Bible, and they don't see you at home praying, but what you do at home is going to come out when you're in front of these people. And they may not have one other person in their life who loves the Lord like you do today. He deserves our best. Who do we think we are that we can just live our lives like we want to live them? I hope, and I don't think, I know, I finally have come to the realization that I was made for eternity. The Lord's given me a wonderful life here. He who began a good work in you will complete it. It may not be completed here. But he started the work. And God doesn't start something he doesn't finish. Because he has made us an eternal being all eternity we will have to worship him who could have kept us who could have taken miserable lives like we've had and turned them into something for him he did it and he paid it all by suffering so what right do I have to say <laughs> I don't think I can do this I don't think I can suffer very much I haven't. I really haven't. I have no right to say. My little girl um, looked on my channel and she said, Mom, this kind of goes like with what you're talking about. Joy through my teardrops. Joy through my teardrops and gains through my losses beauty for ashes and crowns for my crosses. He binds my wounds and he dries my tears, calms every storm, and he conquers my fear. See, I, I really, I really have not wanted to die. He's my family. He made me an eternal being just like he did every one of you. And someday, that's going to be completed. Trials may come and temptations assail me. Though I may falter, he never will fail me. 
So Satan, I bind you in his holy name, for at the cross, Jesus' blood overcame. When the doubt comes, when I'm lonely, when my heart is sad, I'll lift up my eyes to my Savior above, and Jesus will make me glad. When my heart, when in my heart there is sadness and sorrow, Jesus has promised a brighter tomorrow. How bright? We can't even imagine. We can't even imagine. That's our problem. Mm -hmm. We are so focused on the here and now. This is just a tiny little bit. Eternity is never going to end. If, if you don't want to go there, then you need God to work in your heart. He's been working in mine. He's still working on me. When, my heart, when in my heart there is sadness and sorrow, Jesus has promised a brighter tomorrow. Victory is mine. Yes, it's already won. I've only to claim it by faith in God's Son. Do you know even the faith that God used to save you, to bring you to salvation, he gave to you. Mm -hmm. This is what bothers me when I hear somebody say, um, I just don't have faith enough to believe that. Mm -hmm. It's God that gives us the, even, even the faith to believe and understand. All of my cares I will cast down before him. Even in trials my heart will adore him. Even in what? Trials. Even in trials my heart will adore him. He bears my burdens. He comforts my soul. Oh, why should I worry when he's in control? See, I'm, are you one of these control freaks? I like to control what's going on in my life. Fooey. I'm never in control, even though I might think I am. So, <laughs> my youngest daughter, when her girl was little, she'd say, she'd say, Aubrey, say after me, I am not in control. <laughs> Sometimes I think, well, maybe my husband says it to me too. But maybe the Lord says, Joyce, you're not in control. So just leave it there. Lord, in the time of deep grief and emotion. See, I haven't had that. Some of you all have. I will yet serve you with constant devotion. You have not failed me one step of the way. That is the reason I'll trust you and say, I will praise you. I will praise you, Jesus Christ, my King, for you fill my heart with a song in the night. Yes, you make my heart to sing. I hope you, oh, I'm supposed to be quiet. You're already out? Oh, okay. Um, You're supposed to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you don't like the old hymns, I feel sorry for you. These hymns that I have known since I was a little girl, they get in your head and in your heart. And Dawn knows, we, we talk about these old songs, we sing them. They're scriptures. And if you're not reading your Bible and you're reading some of these old songs, it all goes together because they're taken. They were taken out of times and these authors have gone through such horrible things. But they, God has given them a song in their heart. And God wants to put a song in my heart. He wants to keep one there. I love you all, and I appreciate the part you have been in our lives. And I encourage you, don't give it out till you've got it down deep in your soul. Don't let your mouth say something to somebody that's not in your heart. Ask God to write it all over your heart. And then as people see you, they will say, that's who they are. 
They really meant that. They may not say it, but they'll know it. I appreciate the privilege. I have never been willing, because I have never been, just this little bit of problem that I've had is the only thing that's qualified me to even stand up here. But I have not gone through what you all have. But the Lord has. He, he became sin. He was mutilated. Not for him, because he did none, had done no wrong. But he did it for us. So as we walk each day, just remember, he deserves my best, not my leftovers. Not by working all day and at the dark end I drop and say, Lord, I sure do need you tonight. I needed him all day because he'll give me the priorities that I should have. I have this this spring. Some of my children have picked flowers and given them to me. <coughs> so I have a bookmark to give each one of you and the flowers are on it they are pressed flowers that have come from my garden because I don't she calls me what is that lady you call me Morticia Adams because <laughs> I take the flower the heads off the flower <laughs> but I dry them I don't throw them away <laughs> so take one and pass them around Joy yes. while you're doing that are there she has agreed to take any questions you might have are there any questions you want to ask Joyce I hope not <laughs> <laughs> I thank you I really I think and you know the, the thing that amazes me how God is in control of our lives she had asked me for the week before I wasn't ready in here I wasn't ready for this but the things that have happened this week I do. Okay. All right. I'll do it. But I do. I love you all and I appreciate you. And I don't, I have not walked where m many of you, or most of you have walked. But God has. The Lord has. He gave his life for you. So he wants, he gave his best. And he deserves to have our best. Father, I thank you for who you are and what you've done for us and that you have given us the power and the ability to be faithful to you. And I pray that you'll help these ladies, that their, their lives will reach out and touch other people who also need to know you or even just need to be encouraged that they won't ever go through anything, that you will not take care of them because we were made for eternity and we want to go there when you're ready for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Joyce, so very much for coming and talking to us today. I'm thankful for Dawn.